Joining us right now to talk more about this is the president and CEO of Century Aluminum, Michael Bless. He attended the White House meeting yesterday where President Trump announced these tariffs. Mike, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Maria. Great to be here. The impact on your company as a result of these tariffs. Yeah, we, uh, we've had to close, Maria, a good portion of our U.S. production over the last couple of years as this illegal state subsidized uh, production has wound its way to the U.S. So we're immediately going to go and reopen uh, the shut production at our plant in Hawesville, Kentucky. That, that's the plant that makes the military grade uh, aluminum, amongst other products. Uh, hire back a couple hundred folks. We think we're one of the uh, one of the group that's going to be doing this is a couple of our peers in the industry will be doing the same. I'm going to invest $100 million in some new technology in that plant. So as far as we're concerned, as you might suspect, we think this action is, uh, is a long time in coming as we've seen the activity here uh, by these state-supported actors over the last decade plus just absolutely plunder this industry. Are you, are you expecting retaliation? from international oh, aluminum I don't companies? Know. Maria, I don't know. We're not trade experts. We're aluminum folks. We, we know how to run aluminum plants, and we're looking forward to running more of them. You, uh, Michael, you mentioned that plant in Kentucky, and it, it, from my yep. notes, it's showing it's at 40% capacity right now. Are you going to take Correct. it to 100% capacity, and is there the demand for that? Yes, right away, 100% capacity, beginning as soon as the president signs that order. And B, remember, the answer to your second question is absolutely remember, we use just shy of 6 million tons of primary aluminum in this country every year. Right now, the industry is supplying 700,000 tons. So the answer is absolutely. We can, so we can sell all of that 100 times over. And, and that's the thing I think people don't understand, that, that after this action is, uh, is implemented, this country is still going to need millions and millions and millions of tons of imports of primary aluminum. They're, those imports aren't going anywhere. Michael, you talk about military-grade aluminum. The whole reason we're having this tariff conversation is because it's being predicated on the idea that this is a national security issue. But what's interesting here is that the Department of Defense is saying, actually, we really don't think we need these tariffs in order to ensure national security. How can, how can we make this national security argument when, in fact, our national security apparatus is saying it's really not what we need in order to defend the country? Yeah, you bet. And that goes to the 232 statute, as, as you know. It's, it's much, much broader than just military applications. It, it's, it's the, as you know, aluminum, you guys were talking about it, obviously. It's pervasive in the entire economy. So, so for example, a good chunk of the primary aluminum in this country and a bunch of ours at that plant in Hawesville, Kentucky, goes to uh, producers who make wire rod for the electrical grid. So that's what the Commerce Department asked, uh, uh, report asked that you read uh, two weeks ago when it was released. Do we want to be dependent on foreign sources of yeah. this material for things like our electrical grid. It's not just fighter skins and missile skins and things like that. Mike, are you planning on raising prices? No, uh, you know, the beauty of our industry is we're a commodity, right? So our price is set every day on the London Metal Exchange. We're a price taker, Maria. So whatever the exchange says, whatever the quoted prices every day, look on your Bloomberg, that's what we get. But with a 10 percent tariff, Mike, that will make those imports, you said those imports aren't going away, but it will make those imports 10 percent more expensive for consumers it, of aluminum in this country. Well, that uh, two, two parts to your question, I believe, if I may. It, it's yes. not clear whether it will or it won't. Um, the, uh, any tariff might be the place that you might see it is in the, uh, the so-called Midwest premium, which is the local premium here in this country that you get, just like there's one in Europe as well if you deliver aluminum into a short market like the United States mm -hmm. or the EU, for example. That's number one. Number two, this whole argument about, uh, about tr price translation, um, <laughs> if I had some hair, it would be on fire on this one as well, because the rhetoric really here has, with all due respect to some of those making it, especially senior members of, uh, of our Congress, has gotten a little bit out of hand here. The, the price of primary aluminum, guys, as you know, crashed 40 percent in 2015. That's why we had to close our capacity. Right. Did the, uh, did the price of that famous six-pack or the motor car crash by 40 percent of its aluminum content back three years ago? Hmm. We don't think so. And that's the same response we would give if you just look at the data um, as to whether there's going to be any price impacts uh, uh, with a 10 percent tariff. Okay. Well, are you saying, though, Mike, then that the likes of a Miller Coors, Molson Coors, the Beer Institute, um, industries that use a, a lot of aluminum are lying when they say that um, they're worried this is going to cost jobs? Do you really think, uh, Professor Navarro gave some of the data, I can cite some more examples, but do we really think that the average consumer is going to consume less beer or less uh, soda 
um, with the price of that six-pack, worst, worst case, if the entire tariff was translated into the final price, which, again, I'll go back to my example about ha what happened when the price of aluminum crashed. Yeah. But that penny and a half, do, do we really think that's going to cause demand destruction? I, I guess everybody has his or her own, her own view, but it, it seems a little bit improbable so to then, us. So then why is the so journals... Go ahead. No, so they're lying. They're lying when they say that it's going to cost jobs. The, the, the actual I, consumers of your aluminum are not telling the truth. I, um, everybody has to have his or her own view on and, that. And all I can do is, all we can do is journal, cite the data, guys. Why is the journal this morning, the editorial board, uh, calling this the biggest policy blunder of the Trump pre uh, presidency? They say that tariffs will punish American workers, invite retaliation that will harm U.S. exports. I mean, they, they go through all the negatives around this, Mike. Why do you think that I, is? Uh, Look, I can't comment on anybody's motives for writing an editorial. All I can say is, you know, our strong belief is, is if you just, if they would just go to the data rather than the rhetoric, mm. they might have a little bit of a different view. Well, how do you think this impacts the economy then? Uh, we don't have a view on the overall. We're, we're, guys, we're not economists. We, we make aluminum. Um, so how is it going to impact that, your company then? Oh, it'll impact our company quite positively. We're going to bring back this production. We've had to close this production because of the, pr the aluminum price, again, on that London Metal Exchange has been just absolutely trashed by the illegal state subsidized aluminum from China and from others coming into this country. So we will bring back that production, hire those workers, invest in new technology. That's how it's going to help. These are communities in western Kentucky that desperately need this economic support and the employment. So that, that's all we do. That's our job is to run our business, and we can now do it confidently based on the fact that these market abuses aren't going to be allowed anymore, period. Yeah. That, that's what we concentrate well, on. Well, you have, to be, you have to be mindful yes. of this market's reaction to it, right? 400 sell, uh, point sell-off yesterday, 300 point sell-off today. Obviously, people are watching this and saying there's a big negative here. Yeah, again, we'll, we'll let others comment on, on financial markets. Uh, that uh, right. God knows that's not our expertise. Mike, thanks so much. We appreciate you thanks joining so us this morning. Thanks so much for your morning. time. Mike Bless giving us the other side of this story, guys.